World Creator 2023, a new and improved real-time terrain generation, modeling, and design software to help you physically ground your 3D landscapes in your film, gaming, or cinematic projects. Hi, my name is Tyler Purrier, and I'm going to walk you through some of the basics to this new interface. Whether you are a seasoned user from previous versions or trying it out for the first time, we will go through everything you need to know to get you up and running in no time. When starting World Creator, you'll begin with a home screen where you can see the latest World Creator news and updates, open recent or start a new project, even check out some terrain samples, which will be a great place to learn different environments. Let's go ahead and start a new project. The user interface is comprised of three main sections, the viewport, the designer panel, and the properties panel. The viewport is a dynamic window to your creation. Navigation is quite simple and uses some fairly common commands to find your way around the landscape. Should you need more help here, I have a link to some common key commands you'll find within World Creator in the description below. I'd recommend turning on GPU information by clicking the button icon in this stack of quick view options. This will allow you to not only see your GPU's performance stats, but it will show you the min and max elevation points of your terrain. You can also find that info in the height slider to the left, but I find it handy to always have this information visible. We will toggle these various quick view options through this series in time, but these are basically quick links to toggling different visual effects within your viewport, such as the fast render mode, which I highly recommend using when designing the physical shape of your terrain, as it is a bit easier to see what you're doing. The designer panel or outliner is the editor to where you will structure all the pieces and parts to your terrain's design. It is a layer-based structure very similar to Blender or Unreal Engine's outliner panels where there is a clear and simple understanding to the hierarchical system. It houses all the locations for you to establish the terrain's details, shapes, colors, and more. It is also the panel with which we can adjust all our render settings, camera settings, and even change user interface settings such as the UI scale. And lastly, the properties panel houses the various settings and adjustment options for whichever layer or item you have selected from within the designer panel. We will dive into each and every section of the designer panel throughout this series, but let's break down the basic stages to creating a simple terrain. Now there are three main stages to creating a terrain. Scale, Details, and Color. Clicking on the terrain layer, we can first decide the size or scale of the terrain. Currently, the terrain is 1024 by 1024 meters, but you can alter the terrain to be any custom size you want or choose one of these common sizes here. After you've decided on the size of the terrain, we want to control the details that shape the terrain. Expanding the terrain layer and biomes reveals a starting global biome layer. We'll cover biomes in greater depth in another video, but a biome is an area or zone of a specific ecosystem and climate. In our case for now, it's the main layer that's driving our terrain's design. If you click on the global layer, you can control various options for the procedural fractal noise generation that is driving the shapes and details you see on the landscape. In most cases, these default settings will be good to go as is, but you may want to play around with the various base shape types. These are various presets with different procedurally generated detail to help you get started with a generic base. Expanding the drop down icon on the global layer reveals the filter section and material section for this specific biome. To add more terrain details, click the plus icon to the right of the filter layer. Filters are the various procedural terrain effects that alter the shape, surface, or generation within various outcomes based on what you need from canyon effects, erosion effects, or sedimentation. As you roll your cursor over each filter option, you'll see the terrain instantly transforms, giving you a preview as to what the filter will do before you click to accept which filter to add. You can add multiple filters to stack their effects for different outcomes. Each filter has its own property settings, so you can customize each and every effect in a variety of ways. Even rearrange the filters to adjust their hierarchy. World Creator is a layer-based system, so the layer on top will be applied literally on top of the preceding layers below. 
There are plenty of filters to choose from, so the best way to learn them is to simply apply each one individually and adjust our property settings to get a feel for what they do. Once you're satisfied with the details, we can look at applying some color to our surface. Expanding the material dropdown, we can see the white default color layer that is currently covering the surface of our terrain. Adding a new material layer allows us to select from another color layer, a gradient layer, a substance texture, or even import custom texture maps. Once you've added a new color, you can easily change the tint to whichever values you want, but you'll notice that the terrain is fully green and we've lost our white color. Again, since this is a layer-based system, the green color is applied on top of the white color. Now we need to decide how much and where on the terrain this green color will be applied to. Clicking the next drop-down tier under the green color reveals the option to add a distribution layer. Distributions are rules that define how a layer will be quite literally painted on the terrain. So if we, for example, choose slope and adjust the slope range, we can see that our new green color is only displaying between this range of degrees of mesh on this terrain. Distributions are the key ingredient to designing realism in your terrain's material appearance, and there are quite a few to choose from. After you have designed your terrain, you will undoubtedly want to export everything to another application for your final use. There are two different workflows to exporting, direct syncing or manual exporting. We'll be covering direct syncing to various supported applications in later episodes, but at its essence, you simply just need to have the supported applications bridge tool installed, which you can access in the online user portal, Click the sync icon in the top toolbar within World Creator, accept that sync in the other application, and depending on the size and complexity of your terrain, you should see that terrain imported quick and easy. For manual exporting, in the outliner, you'll see an export layer, and clicking on this layers plus icon creates an export preset layer, which then allows you to add any amount of export types within this preset. Presets are a great way to group different types of exports together for different uses, but we'll cover this in greater detail later. There are various maps you can export, such as height maps, normal maps, color maps, and even splat maps. But you can also export the terrain as a mesh of various file formats, as well as a special octane package. These maps, once exported, can be used with any rendering engine or DCC application you like to use them in, such as Blender. Unity, Unreal Engine, or Cinema 4D to name a few. World Creator 2023 is the latest installment to an incredibly powerful real-time terrain generation and design software that has near limitless possibilities to what you want to create. There is a lot of customization available to you, so feel free to jump right in and start experimenting. But if you would like to dive deeper into each element, then continue forward with this introductory series and I'll be sure to cover as much as possible. Thanks for watching everyone, I'll see you soon.